There are two obvious physical differences between humans and our close relatives, the apes. We walk upright, we also have far less hair than do the other apes. So what in our evolutionary path has caused us to develop these distinct features? Well, taking upright walking first. Whilst apes are capable of walking upright, they're ungainly whilst doing so, and both find it uncomfortable and inefficient to do so for long periods of time. Running using four legs, or indeed arms and legs as the apes do, enables greater speed to be achieved than just using two. However, while on all fours, the head is lower to the ground, and also running for an extended period of time is actually less efficient than using two legs. Most apes spend the majority of their time in and amongst trees, where large powerful arms of climbing and traversing trees are a great advantage. And because of the dense nature of the trees, when they do spend time on the ground, having a low head position isn't really an issue. If they're faced with a threat, a quick sprint across the open, followed by a rapid climb up a large tree, will normally be enough to evade most predators that might try to attack them. It's thought that the early humans also dwelt in forested areas, but over time the density of the trees reduced, meaning that form of escape wasn't always available. In addition, large areas between the trees were now filled with tall grass, and in this tall grass a low head position was a real disadvantage. So without being able to see over the grass it's difficult to see both potential predators or indeed prey. So walking upright has an advantage, but to see why early humans adopted this physical form let's look also at how they were obtaining their food. The most common method at this stage was the hunter-gathering method. Whilst gathering of nuts, berries, fruits and roots is so fairly obviously going to be a practical method of acquiring food. How is a relatively slow, bipedal human ever going to catch a four-footed swift animal across the open countryside? Surely anything of real size would make a decent sized meal capable of outrunning a human. Unless the human in question was able to use some form of ambush technique and even then with a few strides the prey would be quickly out of reach called for a whole new method of hunting. This method comes in the form of what's known as the persistence or the endurance hunt. As mentioned before, the two-legged approach to running isn't as fast as four, it's far more efficient. It means that humans are capable of travelling long distances at relatively high speeds without overexerting their bodies. For example, a cheetah is normally listed as the fastest land animal. However, when it sprints, it uses up enormous amounts of energy in the muscles. It's been built up a tremendous amount of heat in the body. And were the cheetah to continue running for more than just a few hundred metres, it would rapidly overheat and die of heat exhaustion. This is why, after a hunt, you see a cheetah panting rapidly, not just to get oxygen into the lungs, but also dissipate the heat built up in the body. So, an early human with good tracking skills can select a large herbivore and pursue it, sometimes even for hours, until finally the animal can no longer elude the hunter anymore and is killed more due to heat exhaustion than any lethal blow the hunter would deliver to the animal. However, whilst this method may be successful in the hot climate of Africa, it's also stressful and damaging to the hunter. This is because though bipedal walking and running may be efficient, continuing at that pace for an extended period of time will also build up heat in the hunter's body and that heat needs to be dissipated or it will suffer from heat exhaustion as well. The early humans needed a method of disposing of all that additional heat that was more efficient than the usual method of panting. The first part, the one also adopted by the flightless birds like the ostrich, is to remove all the insulating layers, be they feathers or fur, in the area around the muscles doing all the work. Next is to cover these areas in sweat glands and small blood vessels near the surface of the skin, swiftly cooling the muscles and preventing overheating, allowing the body to continue running for long distances without serious damage to the body. So, there you have an upright, hairless ape built for endurance rather than speed and also seeing over the tall grass.